Hey there, Brookside. It's great to have you here. Maybe you're in Elmont or Richmond or deep in the heart of Canada. Wherever you are, it is great to have you stopping by. Why not take the opportunity right now in the chat room at brookside.online.church to say, hi everyone. They're all gonna be happy to see you. Try that right now. And if you happen to be new to Brookside Services, we'd love to know that you are hanging out with us today. You can help us with that by heading over to connect.mybrookside.church and filling in our quick online connection card. And when you do that, we'll make a donation to COVID-19 relief work right here in our city. We are kicking off a new series this week called Heavenly, and it's all about heaven. So it's great that you're here for that, but that's not all. Today in this service, we will be celebrating communion together. So if you are a follower of Jesus, make sure to have some bread or a cracker or something like that, and some grape juice or something similar. You don't need to have the specific item available, but make sure that you have something along those lines with you so that you can participate with us in that later on in this service. I'll be back in just a little bit, but we're gonna get this thing started right now with some worship. I count on one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Welcome. 
Thanks for tuning in. My name's Greg. I'm the lead pastor here at Brookside. And uh, we are starting a new series that I've been really excited to get into. I hope you have heard a little bit about what's coming. We're going to be looking at heaven today uh, for the next couple of weeks. It's going to be great. Uh, but before we do, I just want to lead us in prayer and uh, invite you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your faithfulness and your grace. I thank you for the fact that you are with us every moment of every day. You never lose sight of us. You never lose track. Uh, whether we recognize your presence or not, uh, you are with us and we are so thankful. God, I pray that you would open our eyes and our, and our hearts today. Uh, some of us are uh, just finding this, this um, season really tough. Um, being locked down and unable to get around like we want. Um, in some ways, it seems like we've been doing it for quite a while. In other ways, uh, it's, it, it seems harder and harder. So God, I pray that you give us grace and strength. Uh, help us to keep our eyes fixed on you in the midst of this. For some of us, um, we're facing really uncertain times. Physical health is uh, questionable. Some of us are in for surgeries these days and uh, facing uh, diagnoses that we don't want to hear. Uh, so God, we pray for your grace and strength. We pray for your healing touch. And Father, we think of uh, those that we know who are, and maybe uh, some of us watching right now, going through incredibly hard financial times because of uh, what's going on with COVID. I pray for your grace and for your protection for us all. And God, I pray that the hope of heaven, the hope of eternity would fill us today. I pray that we would look beyond our challenges, uh, knowing that you are with us in the midst of them, but help us uh, to just grow and develop a long-term perspective, one that will keep us, um, keep us steady in the midst of any trial. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Julie and I are moving. Many of you know that already. We're moving a, a month, actually next month. We are moving. We are, uh, right now, we're about 15 minutes south of the church facility, and we're going to be moving about 18, 20 minutes west of the church facility, heading out to the, this side of Almont, and we're, we're excited. We're, we kind of go almost every time we can to see how the house is coming along. I can pull out picks and bore you with a thousand different picks of here's all the progression of the house being built, and we're packing stuff, and we're sorting, and we're thinking, is this, are we going to need this in a new place, or, is this, or is it, do, do we just get rid of it, pass it on to somebody else? We're thinking less and less about our place where we are now, because we're thinking more and more about the new place to come. Uh, we want to learn about the community there. We actually take our dog there every once in a while to go for a walk and get her used to the new place. We want to get to know the neighbors and we're already starting to do that and we're kind of planning out all the things that we need to do and almost everywhere we go we're, we're talking with people. It's like, oh yeah, we're moving and here's where we're going and it's going to be awesome and everything else. Um, wouldn't it be crazy? Like, wouldn't it be crazy to kind of totally put it out of our minds from, from the day we made that decision till the, until the moment we get the keys and kind of pull into the driveway. Wouldn't you find that strange? It's like, hey, Greg, aren't you moving? Oh yeah, yeah, whatever. And, and, and not really talk about it. We, could, <laughs> we couldn't do that. Like we, we, we no, we're, we're, we, our futures are there, at least for the, the, the next while. We, you know, we, we know our, that this home is gonna be temporary. Uh, you know, love to be there 30, 40, 50 years. I don't know how much longer I have on this side of the grave. Uh, hope to spend uh, all of it there, but we, we don't know. Uh, we're, we're excited about that, but um, we've got afterwards, we've got an even better place being prepared for us right now. Like we've got an even better home with, 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 with better neighbors and better possibilities. Like everything is gonna be just amazing to the max. Like, uh, and, and it's waiting for us. And if you are a follower of Jesus, it's waiting for you too. Jesus said he's going to prepare a place for you. Um, that's gonna be our ultimate home, our final home, our, our true home, uh, like nothing else has ever been. Like that's what we have ahead of us, better than any experience we've ever had here or could have. How crazy it would be, how crazy it would be to, to kind of ignore that, isn't it? Wouldn't it be like, 
wouldn't that be crazy uh, that, you know, to, to, to ignore the fact that we're going there and to find out what we can about our home destination, just to kind of put it out of our minds until the moment we get the keys and pull up into the driveway of the pearly gates. Like, that would be weird. Yet for many people, for many people uh, here and now who follow Jesus Christ, that's kind of where we're at when it comes to heaven. Like, we know that Jesus died on the cross so that he could pay, for, pay the price to purchase our entrance into heaven. We know that, and, 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 and we get it that, yeah, that's our eternal home, but how excited are we really about it? How much do we daydream about heaven? How much does it influence and affect our lives today? Like, how much time do we spend preparing for it? It's a good question. For many of us, there's this kind of this, this tension in our hearts. Like on the one hand, we, 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 we know it's there, we know it's coming. Um, uh, we, we, get what, we get what Solomon said back in Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse 11, where, where he said, like, this is something that God has done in, in the lives of every single human being. He said he has planted eternity in the human heart. Like there's some sense in which we all have this kind of longing and this sense of this, this wonder, this, this, this ache to know about our eternal home, our eternal destiny. But the second part of that statement, we also get, like that's the other part of this tension. Like we, 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 don't, we don't really know. We, it says, you know, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to the end. So we have this kind of sense of, I know, I know what's there, but I don't really have a clue <laughs> what heaven's gonna be like when we get there. So I, I don't know what to do. And, and, and our picture of heaven could be like super fuzzy and dim. And well, when it's fuzzy and dim and not really, you're not really sure what's going on, that's kind of discouraging. It's kind of deflating. It's like, boy, I'm, I know there's this great hope ahead of me and it's gonna be awesome, I hear. But that's, that, that's all I got. And uh, it, not only is it discouraging, it, it, it's kind of embarrassing too. And uh, like talking to a, to a friend and you're telling them about the good news about a relationship with Jesus and the opportunity to go to heaven. They say, oh, well, what's heaven like? Well, it's, it's better than hell. It's better than that. So that's kind of what we got. Um, but we don't really know very much. So we kind of just push it out of our minds and we just focus on the here and now. Just focus on today. Let's not worry about it. In his, in his book on, on uh, it's a theology textbook actually by uh, Randy Alcorn called Heaven. It's a great book if you want to pick up something uh, on this topic. It's the one I would recommend. Um, he, he tells in it a story about a pastor that he was talking with. And the pastor said to him, you know what? Whenever I think about heaven, it makes me depressed. <laughs> I'd rather just cease to exist when I die. And, and Randy asked, well, why? What's, what's the deal? And he said, well, I can't stand the thought of just of that endless tedium, just kind of floating around on the clouds with nothing to do but like pluck on a harp. Uh, it's all, it all sounds so terribly boring. I, 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 heaven doesn't sound much better than hell. I'd, I'd rather be annihilated than to spend eternity in a place like that. And I think, well, if you're right, if that's what it was all about, <laughs> I don't blame you. But it's not. Like that, that is such a messed up picture of heaven. And where do we get that? Like, it's crazy. So uh, Randy actually goes on to say, and I, I put this quote up on the screen, said, heaven has fallen off our radar screens. How can we set our hearts on heaven when we have an impoverished theology of heaven? How can we expect our children to be excited about heaven or, or to stay excited about heaven when they grow up? Why do we talk so little about heaven? And why is the little that we say, so vague and lifeless. Like when was the last time you had a deep, passionate, exciting conversation with anyone about heaven? Think about it. Can you relate to what Randy was writing here? It's like, so we're starting this new teaching series and we're calling it Heavenly because it's gonna be amazing what we're looking at. And, we're, and if, if you are like an old school church goer and you remember the heyday of all the end times charts and 
talks and conversations and all that kind of stuff, you're gonna be really disappointed if you think that's what we're gonna be doing here over the next couple of weeks, because we're not, like that all talks about like, how are we getting there? What's the tribulation and the millennium and when's the rapture happening and all this kind of stuff. And all of that, the sequence of events, uh, we're not worrying about that. We're skipping all of that. We're kind of going to, to the end but the final result, uh, the final destination, rather than getting hung up on all the details about the journey, we are actually gonna talk about, well, where are we actually going? Where are we gonna be spending eternity? That's what we wanna look at today. So as we kind of jump in, and we're just gonna kind of get our feet wet today, uh, we're gonna jump in, try and clear away some of the common kind of misconceptions about heaven, and we're gonna start to paint uh, what I hope to be a, a, a beautiful, compelling, intriguing, a uh, biblically faithful picture of our final state of heaven. Best that we can do that. Why? Because if you are kind of a, a person watching who is considering following Jesus and you're wondering what it's all about, this is, this is critical. This is, this, is, this is central to the message. This is what Jesus is coming to rescue you from. I wanna give you kind of a, a, a sense of the amazingness of the opportunity that you have when you consider the invitation of Jesus to follow him. And if you know Jesus already, if you are following Jesus, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that this series will inspire you both to dig more in and find out more about heaven, but to get energized and excited about what is in front of us and to, to allow that to move us with momentum and, and hope and peace and confidence through whatever God gives us to face in the meanwhile. Um, it's such a contagious and infectious and energizing truth when we are clear on what heaven is all about. So today we're gonna look at two surprising ideas, two surprising ideas about heaven. And they're surprising sometimes just because we don't think about them. And it's like, oh, wow, really? What's surprising idea number one? God wants you to know about heaven. He wants you to know. And the second one is that, that heaven's better than you think it is. It, it's just better. Whatever you think it is, you get, you're gonna have to up a notch or two or five or a hundred. Like it's just better. We're gonna, we're gonna see of that a little bit and more and more as we go through this series. But let's start uh, today with kind of just kind of an intro into this. What does the Bible have to say? First surprise then is this, God wants you to know. He wants you to know about heaven like that. And, and if you are exploring faith or if you're new to the Christian scene, it, you may be thinking, what? That, 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 that sounds weird. That sounds a little bit odd. Why, why would anybody think that God wouldn't want us to know, right? Um, but there are a lot of people who've been in kind of Christian circles for a long time who not only have very little idea about what heaven is about, but they feel that we're actually not really supposed to know. Like there's, God doesn't really want us in on his you know, future secrets. And, 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 and maybe you've heard this line and if you've been uh, kind of <laughs> around for a long time, maybe you've used this line, who knows? Um, uh, you know, it goes something like this. We, we, we can't know what heaven's gonna be like. We can't imagine what heaven's gonna be like, but I'm sure it's gonna be great. It's, whatever it is, it's gonna be better, more wonderful than we can imagine. And usually that kind of comes from 1 Corinthians chapter two, verse nine, which says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. And it's like, wow, that's, that, 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 that's pretty, pretty, pretty potent there. It's like, wow, sounds like we can't really know. But the problem is that that's only half of a sentence. That's, that's not a complete thought in the Bible. And if you, if you read it in context, you have to read the next verse as well to at least complete one full sentence. So he starts off saying, no eye is seen, no ear is heard, no mind is conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. For his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep Secret. So it sounds like what we thought was, you know, that, that oh, God's not doesn't want us to know, and it's and, and it's too big. We can't even imagine it. But God's revealed it by His Spirit. Where in His Word we see in His Word over and over more and more hints and indications and information about heaven. Here's another one: Deuteronomy chapter 29. Uh, and this one again sounds sounds pretty convicting. It says, you know, the Lord our God has secrets known to no one. 
We're not accountable for them. Okay, sounds like it's none of our business, right? Sounds like, you know, just keep your nose out of it and, and don't, don't bother God on things that, are, that belong, to, belong to God. But again, you gotta complete the statement. That, that's, that's the beginning. There's some things and yeah, God doesn't reveal everything, right? Uh, but he reveals, he reveals some things, his secrets known to no one. We're not accountable for them, but we and our children are accountable forever for all that he has revealed to us so that we may obey all the terms of these instructions. So there's, it's like, yeah, he doesn't tell us everything, but he does tell us something, and the something that he tells us, we're responsible for. We should know, we should dig into it. And then there's Paul's, the Apostle Paul's kind of uh, instruction to kind of a fledgling church plant. Uh, they were in, in Colossae, in a place that, uh, you know, major, major need for the gospel of Jesus Christ pagan culture all around. And here's a new fledgling church plant. Paul's writing to them. And he could have basically said to them, hey, don't worry about all this heaven stuff. Just put that out of your mind. You need to just focus on the mission. Just, just do the mission. Don't, don't worry about heaven. That's, that's you know, something God's gonna take care of. Don't, don't worry about it. That's not what he says. Listen to what he says. Chapter three, verse one and two of Colossians. He says, since you've been raised to new life with Christ, so set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. Like direct command here, like repeated multiple times here to drive it home. Like we are to think about heaven. We're to set our minds on eternal things. We are to not be worried about and anxious about and fretting about and, and daydreaming about the things of the world. We're supposed to be doing uh, our, our thinking and our dreaming and our planning and our hoping on things of heaven. Sometimes I, I, I hear people ask, you know, why get all obsessed about heaven? Why get all worked up about that? You know, if there's an old saying, uh, you know, they, 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 they were too heavenly minded for, to be any earthly good. You know, you get so focused on heaven, you're not gonna be able to connect and you're not gonna be relevant and you're not gonna even think about reaching your next door neighbor. And, and, and that, that, that's, that, that, that's actually kind of silly. It's, it's not true. Um, the more we get focused on heaven, the more we understand what heaven's like, the more excited about heaven we are. That doesn't distract us from the mission. It actually energizes us for the mission. It energizes us to reach out to people. It inspires us to do this because now we have something to share. Now we've got something that we know what's coming and like we don't want people to miss out. Like it's gonna be amazing. C.S. Lewis, a famous author from previous generations, he knew this, he wrote in one of his books, he said, if you read history, you'll find that the Christians did, that the Christians who did the most for the present world were just those who thought most of the next. It is since Christians have largely ceased to think of the other world that they've become so ineffective in this. Isn't that interesting? Aim at heaven and you'll get earth thrown in. Aim at earth and you will get neither. Like, wow, that's, pretty, that's insightful. You know, God wants us to know about heaven. He wants us to have an accurate picture of what heaven will be like. Maybe not complete, we may not know every detail, but it can be accurate. There are things we can know. And if we're going to build that accurate picture, then we need to kind of clear away some of the inaccurate ones. We need to kind of make room, kind of clear away some of the cobwebs or some of the, you know, get a, get, get a big broom and sweep things away, get a white, get a, an, an eraser and erase away some of the stuff that may be on our screens of our minds about heaven in the first place. So I just want to kind of really quickly hit a couple of misconceptions about heaven that are so easy for us to pick up on because they're so prevalent in our culture culture today. Uh, they're not biblical, but they are, they are current and they're prevalent. One of the most common ones is kind of that Philadelphia cream cheese commercial kind of Im imagery of, of heaven where it's like floating around on clouds, white garb, halos, wings, Philly and bagels, that kind of, that kind of deal. It's kind of this ethereal, unfamiliar, weird experience floating on, the cr on, on clouds. I remember seeing a, uh, a, a, 
cartoon of a guy sitting up on a cloud uh, with you know, his wings and his stuff, and he's kind of sitting on the cloud, kind of looking listful, wistfully down, and uh, there's kind of one of those thought bubbles popping up from his head, and it says, I should have brought a magazine. It's like, that's, that's, that's not a biblical picture of heaven. So if that's kind of what's in your mind, erase that one out, get rid of that one. Here's another misconception. Heaven is kind of that eternal church service where it's like huge crowds and pews and jammed together, uh, the huge pipe organ and, 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 and just everybody's just singing song after 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 song like forever ad infinitum, like, uh, you know, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's not a picture of heaven, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, um, they're, 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 that's not, just wipe that one out of your head too. Um, there are expressions and examples of worship uh, in heaven. And w when we worship God in heaven, it is gonna be a full blasted um, celebration of, of life and of God that, that will blow our socks off and it'll be amazing. We, we won't be bored, uh, but it's not gonna be some you know, flip, 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 la, 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 la kind of deal. So. One final misconception I want to mention before we jump in to uh, what it actually is, um, is, is kind of the heaven as kind of Casper the ghost or, or like ghost town, kind of that uh, disembodied spirits kind of floating around, uh, you know, in uh, ghost town, Bertram Pincus is you know, near death experience and now he can see ghosts around him and they're disembodied people trying to trying to solve their, 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 whatever their unfinished business was and why in the story there, that's kind of why they were stuck. And, you know, they were, they were, they were just disembodied spirits kind of floating around. And that's, that's another false idea. That, 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 that's not what the Bible paints when it paints a picture of heaven. So, um, just kind of clear that stuff out of your mind and, and ask, you know, God, help me to understand what heaven's all about. Um, so that's where, I, that's where I want us to go. So that first surprise is simply this, God wants you to know. He wants you to know the truth. Um, there's nothing keeping you from that except perhaps your you know, level of interest, your level of, of inquisitiveness into it. So the second surprise, uh, I already mentioned it, but let's get into it. Second surprise is simply this, it's better than you think. It's better than you think it's gonna be. Heaven is gonna be awesome, like it, it, just mind-blowingly amazing. And we're gonna look at it more and more over the next couple of weeks together. Um, and uh, we're gonna do that. That's something you can look forward to. And I wanna encourage you as we do, like send in your questions. We want this to be as interactive as it can be. You know, text the number on the screen. I think there's an email that you can use as well. Um, we're gonna do our best to answer your questions through the course of these messages. Uh, we're also gonna be doing a podcast. We're launching a new podcast. I think that was already mentioned or will be um, starting this Tuesday. It's gonna be uh, a great way for us to share and interact on some of this stuff too. So, but for right now, let's just kind of get, get our feet wet, get ourselves kind of thinking biblically about heaven. Uh, and let me hit the basics uh, and then we'll, then we'll wrap up. So heaven, what'll it be? Heaven will be a resurrected life, resurrected life, newness of life. That's, that's, that's kind of the obvious part. Um, life that actually starts the moment we come, uh, become a child of God, the moment we become a Christian, the moment we give our lives to Jesus Christ. It's not like something that starts then, it's actually started now already. If, if you are a follower of Jesus, if you are thinking of following Jesus and want to follow Jesus and choose to follow Jesus today, this life can start for you right now. If you'll surrender your life to him, give your life to him, ask him to forgive your sin, to come in and cleanse you and take control of your life, you can, that's all you have to do, just ask him to do that and then <laughs> follow him. Um, that, that new life can start right now. Uh, in 1 Peter, 
Peter says this in chapter one. He says, it is by his grace, God's grace, that we have been born again. He's talking past tense because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And now he says, now we live with a great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance. We've already got it. It's already ours. An inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled beyond reach of any change or decay. We've already got it. It belongs to us. Heaven, the new life has already begun. Heaven will not be the end of our lives. It'll be the start of something different, but it will be the continuation of uh, the life that has begun here. Heaven will, in a lot of ways, be kind of just a relocation of our new life, a continuation of what God has already begun in us. And we're going to dig in a little bit more, flesh that out in the, in the weeks ahead. Um, second thing is heaven will be a resurrected life in a resurrected body. Um, the Bible is so clear over and over and over uh, throughout, the, throughout the scriptures, especially in the New Testament, uh, we will receive a new body. It's a physical experience. It's a physical thing. Um, and, and, and it's going to be fun to get into what, this, what, what our physical bodies will be able to do and all of that kind of thing, uh, to think and dream a little bit about that. But for now, let, let, let me just turn our attention to 1 Corinthians, uh, where again, Paul was writing to a, a brand new church that's learning what it means to follow Jesus in the midst of a pagan world. And uh, he's talking about uh, that when we go to heaven, he says, our earthly bodies, this is 1 Corinthians 15, our earthly bodies are planted in the ground when we die, but they will be raised to live forever. Our bodies are buried in brokenness, but they'll be raised to glory or in glory. They'll be buried in weakness, but they will be raised in strength. They'll be buried as natural human bodies, but they will be raised as spiritual bodies. And so here we've got like uh, brokenness, glory, um, weakness, strength, kind of physical, normal, natural, uses the word spiritual to describe our new bodies, but they are bodies. He's not talking about uh, a, a, an ethereal, non-material body. He's talking about actual physical bodies. Jesus is the primary example of a person who has been, who, who has died and has, and is in their heavenly body. He's able to eat with them. He's able to you know, had, had, had breakfast with them, touch them, have them touch him, everything else. Um, Paul kind of reemphasizes this in his second letter to the Corinthian church, where he says this, uh, we grow weary in our present bodies. We long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing, for we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. Like, boom, hello, uh, there it is. There, you know, and, and as we go through this series, we're gonna dig in a little bit more to what, what does that mean to, to have new bodies? But one of the things it means is that I will be me, <laughs> you will be you. Like we, 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 it's not like we are suddenly different people with no memory of, of our world or anything else. It's like we, we're, we're, life is gonna continue. It's gonna be radically improved. It's gonna be a, a life without pain. Uh, my feet are no longer going to hurt. We're not, we're, you're not going to have trouble sleeping anymore. Uh, your eyes, you're not going to need glasses. You're not going to, you're not going to have to worry about, uh, taking your, your, your meds and your pills and all that kind of stuff if you need to. Um, we're going to have bodies that are stronger and, and, and more fit and healthy than, you know, Olympic decathlete. Like we're, it's going to be amazing. We have a resurrected life in a resurrected body. And the third thing uh, the Bible is very clear on is that it will be with the resurrected Jesus. And this is really the most amazing thing. It's great to be a new life, new body, beautiful place, everything else, but to be with God. To be with Jesus is the most amazing thing. And Jesus, the night before he died, he was meeting with his disciples and they were, and, 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 and he was talking about the fact that he was gonna die. He was gonna be crucified uh, the next day. And, and they were like, oh, this, this, this is hard. It, it hurts. We don't wanna be separated. And Jesus said, you know what? Don't, don't, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And then he said, there is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, I, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything's ready, I will come again and, and, and get you so that you will always be 
with me where I am. We will be with the resurrected Jesus. So resurrected life in a resurrected body with the resurrected Jesus on the resurrected earth. Yeah, you heard me, the resurrected earth. And so often when we talk about heaven as our final state, final place, we always think of it as somewhere else. Somewhere else, it's, it's heaven there, there somewhere. We always kind of point upwards, right? It's like, yeah, heaven, uh, in, as the Bible describes it, is going to be reunited with earth. Heaven and earth will be restored, renewed. Uh, they will become one again as it was originally intended. As we see back in Genesis, like this is uh, Second Peter. Let, let me just kind of wrap up with this. Um, second Peter chapter three. Uh, Peter's talking to the church. He says, you know what? Uh, But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. And he said, then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire and the earth and everything on it will be laid bare. He's saying like, God is going to, (laughs) I I always think of of like a a potter working on a a clay pot and and it's on the wheel and and, and he just takes it and goes... (laughs) Yeah, like, it's, it's going to be um, redone. And then he starts refashioning. And that's what Peter, that's the imagery that I think is, uh, comes to my mind when I read what Peter's saying here. Uh, verse 11, he says, since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives should you live? Like looking forward to the day of God and, the, and hurrying it along so that the day, or because on that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. Pretty scary stuff that he's describing here. But it goes on to say, we're looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth as he has promised a world filled with God's righteousness. So dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. And remember our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. Like God will bring judgment. And he says that the old, that this earth and this heaven, it will all pass away, but it will be restored, renewed, new heaven, new earth. And we're gonna look into that a little bit more as we get onto this series as well. Uh, but if you wanna get a kind of a good picture of what heaven will be like, you know, you don't need to kind of look up into the clouds and you simply just need to look around you and ask yourself, like what would a perfected world look like? A world without sin, without decay, without, without hurt, without pain, without depression, without anxiety, without anger and hatred. A, a world with that, that's just full and rich with life and meaning and value and blessing and adventure. Like the, the, that's what we have awaiting for us, a perfected world. The heavenly surprise is simply this, God wants you to know these things. And what he reveals to us is like mind blowing. It's amazing. And you don't want to miss it. And on a minute, uh, Lucas is going to be leading us in celebrating the Lord's Supper. Uh, A a moment where we remember just how much it cost, how much it cost Jesus personally to pay the price for my sin and your sin so that we could have this opportunity to be with him in heaven for eternity. Um, and as you prepare your heart for that moment, um, listen to this, kind of put together a little bit of a, a teaser on heaven, uh, a, a trailer kind of to help you maybe begin to imagine, perhaps for the first time, what it'll be like when you place your life in Jesus' hands and Jesus comes to bring us home. Let's watch this. Look out the window. Take a walk, talk with your friend, use your God-given skills to paint or draw or build a shed or write a book, but imagine it, all of it, in its original condition. The happy dog with the wagging tail, not the snarling beast beaten and starved. The flowers unwilted, the grass undying, the blue sky without pollution. People smiling and joyful, not angry, depressed and empty. If you're not in a particularly beautiful place, close your eyes and envision the most beautiful place you've ever been, complete with palm trees, raging rivers, jagged mountains, waterfalls, or snowdrifts. Think of friends or family members who love Jesus and are with him now. Picture them with you, walking together in this place. 
All of you have powerful bodies, stronger than those of an Olympic decathlete. You are laughing, playing, talking, and reminiscing. You reach up to a tree and pick an apple or orange. You take a bite. It's so sweet that it's startling. You've never tasted anything so good. Now you see someone coming toward you. It's Jesus with a big smile on his face. You fall to your knees in worship. He pulls you up and embraces you. At last, you're with the person you were made for, in the place you were made to be. Everywhere you go, there will be new people and places to enjoy, new things to discover. What's that you smell? A feast, a party's ahead, and you're invited. There's exploration and work to be done, and you can't wait to get started. One of my favorite um, places in the Bible is when Jesus is sitting at the Last Supper with his disciples, his closest friends. And he says, guys, don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. Because I'm going to prepare a place for you. And he says, my father, his, his house has many rooms. And there's room for you. And it's this beautiful picture. And just like what we talked about today, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no human mind has ever conceived the things that God has prepared for those who love him. It's this beautiful moment where Jesus kind of gives a bit of a hint to his friends Guys, what is in store for you is the most amazing thing. And for those of us who have accepted Jesus into our hearts, as a community, we get this moment today to celebrate communion together. By, by taking food and drink and really celebrating the fact that Jesus Christ has gone ahead and prepared a place for you and for me. And maybe you're not totally convinced, maybe you're not totally sure that, that this is all real. And, and if that's you today, then I just encourage you to observe and, and to watch and, and ask us questions about like, what does this mean for you? What is it like to really feel a close fellowship with Jesus? As Jesus was um, leaving this earth, he left commands to celebrate and observe the Last Supper again and again and again. And we get to do that together as a church family. In 1 Corinthians, in the chapter 11, Paul writes this. He says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Today, I just have this flat bread. And it's a reminder. It's, it's nothing really special. It's just pita bread, but it's a reminder that... Christ's body was really broken for my sins. Would you pray with me as a remember? Lord Jesus, we thank you that you died on the cross for our sins, that your body was broken and pierced for our sins, for the things that separated us from you. And we thank you, God, that you rose that your, your body's no longer broken. And we remember that today. Amen. In the same way, Paul continues, he says, in the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup 
He said, this is the cup that is my new covenant in blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So again, today, I I just have some sparkling water. It's nothing really special about this drink, but it's a moment for me to remember with you guys, with my friends and family at Brookside, that as a family, we can celebrate Christ and his work on the cross. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that you were pierced, that you took all of our sin to the cross with you, that your blood poured out as an offering over our sin so that we can enter into eternal life and enter into that celebration in heaven forever and ever and ever with you because the blood you spilled. And so today, as we drink our drinks, we remember, Lord, we remember your sacrifice. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh 
name. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh God, you are my living hope. So dear Lord, we thank you so much for your work on the cross. We thank you that we can celebrate communion together. And we anticipate, Lord, we anticipate seeing you face to face in glory. I can't wait for that moment, God. But I eagerly wait for you. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And the church said, Amen. Hey, Brookside, good news. We are already a week into February, and we've got lots going on. We've got two game nights coming up soon. Uh, those are happening online through Zoom. First, on Saturday, February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day, we've got a special couples game night. Grab your partner and come on out for some fun couples games online through Zoom. That's at 7 p.m. on Saturday, February 13th, and the link is in the Brookside Brief. Now, if you're not part of a couple, that's not a problem because the following week on Saturday, February 20, we're having one of our highly rated regular game nights. Well, whether you're a couple or a single or, or whatever you are, come on out and see what we're playing. It's always a good time. That's on Saturday, February 20 at 7 p.m. And again, the link for that is in the Brookside Brief. We've got something new starting up this week. We're launching Brookside Conversations featuring honest discussions about life and faith. Those conversations might take different forms, but as part of that, this week, the banter is up and running again. On Tuesday morning at 10 a.m., we will be live streaming a conversation between Greg and Lucas as they talk through some thoughts and questions that came out of today's teaching content. And you can check that out, that live stream on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Or you can get it on demand afterwards if that's your preference. You can also subscribe to the audio podcast version of that. The links to get there are all in the Brookside Brief. If you had any questions from this morning that you wanted to send in, remember that you can do that by texting the number on the screen or the, sending it to the email address on the screen, banter at mybrookside.church. Be sure to check out the banter this week. It should be really interesting. If you don't get the Brookside Brief email newsletter, well, we really don't want you to miss out on anything going on at Brookside. So head on over to mybrookside.church right now and sign up for that. It has all the information you need about everything that we have going on, Wednesday night gatherings, Sunday morning virtual lobby, kids and youth stuff, how to send in your prayer requests, uh, and, and so much more. The Brookside Brief is a great way to stay informed and connected. Through all of those things that we have going on, we're trying to stay connected to each other, trying to help each other out. It's all part of our mission here at Brookside which is to help develop fully engaged followers of Christ. That's what Jesus wants for all of us. And each of us has a role to play in seeing that happen. Now, if you wanna see more people develop a deeper connection to Jesus, you can help by giving towards this mission. When you give generously, you're saying that you wanna see more of our community become fully engaged followers of Christ. You can give through e-transfer or pre-authorized debit or, or check if you need to. And all the instructions can be found at mybrookside.church slash giving. Thank you for giving so that this mission can continue to move forward. If you're new to Brookside, we'd love to know that you joined us here today. Please fill in our online connection card at connect.mybrookside.church. Just let us know a little bit about yourself. And when you do that, we'll make a donation to Respond Ottawa and their efforts to help meet needs across our city during the current COVID-19 crisis. So connect with us and help with crisis response in our city at the same time. Just go to connect.mybrookside.church. Thanks very much for doing that. And hey, thanks again for being here with us today. If you're watching this on Sunday morning during the premiere, the virtual lobby is open right now. You should stop by. Come on by, see some friendly faces. You can get there by going to mybrookside.church slash lobby. We'd love to see you there. And if we don't see you there, maybe we'll see you at one of our other online events coming up this week, like the couples game night on Saturday or 
on the Banter live stream this Tuesday morning. Stay safe, stay connected. We'll see you soon.